I am David, your developer on Duty, and in this video we're gonna have a look at the vision of the Rust team for 2022. In February the 22nd, the Rust compiler team published a blog post listing all the important initiatives in 2022. It gives a great insight in what to expect. As you can see, this list is quite extensive, so let's go through some of the main points. One of the biggest initiatives, and clearly eagerly awaited, is improvements in async Rust. There's also a dedicated blog post just for that topic. At the moment, async Rust has a lot of downsides. First off, Rust doesn't ship with a default async runtime, which is reasonable since Rust tries to satisfy many different demands from embedded systems to full-blown web servers. In practice, however, this comes at a cost. As an app developer, you must choose a runtime, hoping that all the libraries you use have support for it. Mixing and matching async runtime involves running multiple executors. That's usually not something you want. As an example, take a look at the database library SQLX. They supported the async runtime async std as well as Tokyo. But because of the high maintenance burden, they want to fully switch to Tokyo. In this issue, they ask the users of SQLX if they are okay with sunsetting the support for async standard. If it gets enough support, they'll do it. Poor 43 people still depending on it. But there is hope. There's a new Rust initiative to make async Rust portable and interoperable. As a first step, they want to provide a standard library for async Rust. Currently, every runtime ships its own library. It would be much better if there'd be a consensus of core functionality such as I.O. traits like async read and async write and concurrency primitives. Furthermore, in order to switch executors, one needs a standardized interface, for example, traits to spawn tasks. Another common pain point is the missing support for async traits. If you define a trait with an async function, you get the error message trait functions cannot be declared async. To make that work, you can use the external crate async trait and use the async trait macro for your traits, where you can then define an async function and in your trait implementations. The other option is to define normal functions returning a future, but that can quickly become quite tedious See also my other video, The Downside of Rust. Once the feature to support async functions in traits lands, it will be a lot less painful and just straightforward to use. There are also some polishing activities, for example to make async stack traces more readable and helpful. At the moment they leak quite a lot of internal implementation details from the async runtime. Let's have a look at an example from Tokyo. You can see it's quite messy. The 13 stack frames at the bottom are related to the Tokyo startup and shouldn't be of any interest to the casual app developer. Compare that to how simple a normal non-async stack trace is. In addition to that, there are also some tooling initiatives, for example, to recover and inspect the state of async core dumps. So all in all, the goal is to let applications choose their runtime each serving different needs, but let libraries be independent from it, make it just work, and polish the experience. There's also a debugging initiative to establish a debugging working group to find out what's still missing and improve the debugging experience for Rust developers. There's also the faster builds initiative because Rust builds are considered slow compared to other programming languages like NIM, Go or SIG and are regularly discussed on Hacker News whenever a new Rust post comes up. Now there's an initiative to help addressing these issues. A living document is created to help track the areas of improvements. There's also a roadmap for faster single crate compilation, faster project compilation, better benchmarks, as well as better UX for performance evaluation. There's also an expressiveness initiative. I love it when a programming language is expressive 
and allows concise and simple code as opposed to for example Go, which is not expressive at all. In the past, Rust already improved a lot, for example by introducing the question mark operator to bubble up errors, or as another example, capturing arguments in format strings using curly braces. And now Rust continues this tradition to improve expressiveness, and it will provide support for GETs, or generic associated types. This feature is one of the highest voted issues in the Rust repository. So let's give you a motivational example. Suppose you have a trait called pointer family and it has an associated type called pointer. But now this associated type is generic over T. And you can say that it has to fulfill the bound DREF target equals T. Now you can define a function new generic over T, which takes the value of T and returns self pointer with that t. Now let's say we have a struct arc family. Now we can implement pointer family for this struct, implement pointer family for arc family, and we can say that our type pointer shall be an arc, and the function new will just return arc new. Now we can do the same thing for other smart pointers, for example rc's, and we just change arc to rc. Now you can create a struct foo generic over any pointer family and you can say it has a property bar and it should be a pointer of string. Now the advantage is that you only need a single generic parameter p and inside this struct you can even use different values. For example not only string but also a pointer of u size. And without guts, you'd need one generic parameter for each type. Another example are async traits, because if you desugar them, you will see that you also need generic associated types. So they are very important. Now, the last initiative is called libraryfication, and it's an initiative to break up the monolithic code base of the Rust compiler into reusable libraries so they can be used for other things, for example, for Rust Analyzer. This is especially important because Rust Analyzer just joined the Rust organization, and it's the state of the art language server for the Rust programming language. In addition to that, there are a lot of other areas where the Rust team is looking for help. Please have a look at the complete list. I will link the blog post in my description. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Are there any particular features you would like to see in the next Rust versions? Please post them in the comments. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.